sister, are you in the woods again? Huh? Oh, hi, girlfriend. What you doing zooming up through here? Okay, there's sister and Gingy. Hi, girls. Good morning, honey. How you doing, girlfriend? You gonna, oh, oh, okay. All right, got a little Cardi B action going on there, girlfriend. You better watch out, girlfriend. So good morning guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Welcome back to the channel. It's beanie weenie time, honey. <laughs> and it's hobo <laughs> homesteading time here in Tennessee. This is when we bring on the winter months and we're bundled up in just whatever is comfortable and warm. <laughs> and cat lady don't care. So good morning, Fritzy. Where you going, sister? S see, that's all you get right there. She came, you saw, she's gone. That's it. Okay, there. I'm gonna start calling you Cardi B, honey, while you were sticking that rear end up, Cardi B. What you doing, Cardi B? Okay, all right. So Fritzy's getting some fresh water. It's time to fill the cat foods. Um, I was such a good little homesteader, y'all, because some of you just don't get it, but that's okay. I love you. I love you like little pigs. Um, I leave cobwebs up to a degree because number one, they come back within a week or two, but number two, um, they catch all this dust and debris. See? She's loving it. <laughs> Tweety, how you doing? She's figured out to perch up here. I'm coming, Enoli. She's figured out. So if y'all don't know, this is my sweetie Tweety. Yes, she's sort of disabled. She's cross beaked and black. She doesn't have an eye. She was given to me at the local co-op. They were probably either just gonna put her down or something. So it was a little tiny little chick. So we took her and we've raised her. She's done really well. Kind of have to help her along a little bit, but she's a, a very aggressive eater. Um, she didn't take any bull from anybody, that's for sure. But she started to perch up here. So this is why you see me with that scraper tool to scrape off all of the uh, poop. Sometimes you can go for a day or two and there's not much of anything at all. You know what I'm saying? And then you come in like today and you've got poopy doopy, but it's not in my rabbit cages. This is why we cover everything like we do. How you doing in there, honey? You doing good? Got all those eggs tucked nice and neat. You doing a good job, girlfriend. Doing a good job, mama. What are you doing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I have two, I know, I took my gloves off. This is what I get. It's gonna be all, it's probably gonna be on my face. <laughs> we have two turkey girls now that have been broody uh, almost a week, give or take. So I need, I need to write that down. So what it's looking like is we're gonna have maybe two turkey girls hatching baby turkeys at the same time that we're gonna have hopefully mamas popping goat babies everywhere. It's just exciting times here on the homestead. So this girl in down here, I didn't even know anything was going on until I walked by and I went, oh my gosh. That's my dog crate. This is what I had the cats sleeping in last year and during the winter. I put all kinds of bedding in it and I put some cat beds in it. And they kinda had a little bit to do with it, not too much. They went to the loft or they hid in the hay or, you know, they came down to the house, which is actually what's more of what's going on with these barn cats. I'm sweating now, oh my gosh. Um, so now we've got a turkey mama bedded down in the dog house and I have one in one of my stalls which I have to use for my goat girls here probably in the next, what is it girlfriend? Why are you climbing me? <laughs> um, in the next couple, well, week and a half or so. So I don't know what we're gonna do with her. I'm just gonna kind of let it float and see if she sticks. Sometimes they don't stick. So we'll see how that goes. Are you gonna be a daddy? Which one's gonna be the papa? Who would know so many potentials? Okay, can you see this? It might fuzz out. So behind the gate, let me back up guys so you can see better. 
I have a turkey mama on eggs. And this little guy is Boo Radley. And we can't catch him if our life depended on it. I'm going to have to bring the fish net up because, look, he's got dirt daubers all over his feet. We tried to catch him yesterday. It didn't work out. See it right there? we got to get those off. But what he's done, hi, buddy, is he comes over and he sits with this mama. This is his girlfriend. He has claimed her. I'm not joking. This is where you'll usually find him. But I have to be careful because if I come and startle him, it startles her. I know it's fuzzy, y'all. Um, and she'll break all of her eggs. She's on about 10 eggs. So, they're boyfriend and girlfriend, y'all. Boo Radley, honey, we're going to have to get those dirt daubers off of your feet, honey. Yes, there's no sense for you to run like a jackrabbit. Look at that. We got to catch him, y'all. We got to catch him. So, here's the deal. I want to remind you of this. I know 98.9% .9 of you already know this, okay? But for those of you that may have not thought about this, or especially your children or grandchildren haven't thought about it, let me tell you what's been going on. Or should I ask the question, is this what's going on? Let's do it that way. I'll ask questions. <clears throat> do you think it's all a head fake, but for their own reasons? And what do I mean by this? Well, for the last 10, 15 years, 10, you know, whatever, you know, we got into these movements to where everybody gets a trophy, right? Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody is this. Now, I'm not talking about color or gender. What I'm talking about is the idea of completely getting rid of. It, I'm asking the question, are they getting rid of were they attempting to slowly train your brain to make you think that there's no such thing as any form of exceptionalism? You know what I mean? Do you? I don't know. You know, everybody gets a trophy. Everybody is equal. Everybody is smart. Everybody is all these things. Now, I'm not saying everybody isn't special or doesn't have an opportunity to be something great, but we have to realize that we are all different. And we, some of us are good in some things and the other rest of us aren't good at it. I am horrible at making jelly and I stink at sewing. So there's no reason for me to go to the state fair and, and, and throw out some jelly in a jar that I supposedly make because I stink at it, y'all. I really do. I mean, I've made a few good batches here and there, but this is why Tara does butters and jams. I really prefer them anyway. But, you know, so if I put together, you know, muscadine jelly and go to the Tennessee State Fair or wherever and I throw my little jelly jar out there and I win it, I'm going to know something's up. It's called home cooking. But there's a reason for that. It's telling. So if my really sucky jar of jelly that doesn't even look right, didn't even gel right, is a little bit runny, the headspace isn't right, you know, maybe there's a dent in the lid that's not even turned correctly, all the things they judge, you know. Um, why would anybody want to tell me that I'm the winner of the state fair for the canning jelly jelly competition? Because I know I'm not. But see, this is a head fake. This would be a head fake. Because what that would be doing is telling all these other people, who would get, ladies in particular, who would get really mad. I mean, they would. And they'd make a stink about it for a while. But then if you keep doing it over and over and over, year after year after year, it becomes the standard. And what the standard is, is that there is no standard. Stop believing that because you are an American, that you are not exceptional, because we are. Now note that I'm saying you, I'm not talking about the government. There's exceptional people in every country, okay? So I realize that somebody's gonna say, you arrogant Americans, because I've seen some of that. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, us arrogant Americans are sick and tired of giving you people, not all of you, just anybody, I mean, how about we just pull out completely and stop giving you our money? Okay, how about we pull out and we stop giving our money to all these other places and we'll let you and your government and your people step up to the plate? So no, I'm not going to take any of this, you arrogant Americans, we're tired 
of being treated this way too, which is exactly what I'm talking about. The head fake is, is they're telling you that you don't matter. They're telling our veterans, I'm not even gonna ask questions, I'm just gonna say it. They're telling our veterans they don't matter. They're telling us we don't matter. And see, this has been a slow train of the brain because we go, I can't change it. What am I supposed to do about it? What am I supposed to do about it? What am I supposed to do about it? So let's get this straight. Americans can't afford health care. Americans are getting to the point where they can't buy food. Uh, we're, uh, what's gas going to be? People are getting evicted from their apartments and from their homes, yet we're bringing in millions and millions and millions of other people and we're giving them everything that they'd ever want and need. No. See, what that's doing is telling you and telling your children that you don't matter. And it's telling you that you're just a, an arrogant sicko because you expect to be treated better when you're the one that's paying all the tax dollars. But see, they can't have that. This is a deliberate destruction of Western civilization. This is a deliberate destruction of the Western world and way of life. I ain't saying it's all roses. They're doing exactly to you and me what they did to our ancestors. They are doing exactly to you and me what they did to the Native Americans and are still doing to this day. Can you imagine if we had sent, if we had sent just 10% of the money that's been sent to Xanadu, if we had sent that to say Pine Ridge, for example, just a hypothetical here. Can you imagine all the good if it had gone to the, through the right hands, to the right hands, okay? There's corruption everywhere. But my point is, is see, it's the whole notion of save the man, kill the Indian. See, you have to take it. You have to shut up. You have to sit down. You can't be exceptional. You can't be a lady in a sports competition or in a beauty contest anymore. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not strong enough. You're not essential enough. You're not, you don't have enough finesse as compared to the dude over there with the uh, fake hair, the um, implants on his teeth and implants everywhere else. See what that's done to the women? Whether you're into beauty contests or sports competitions, that's not what I'm talking about. When you train your whole life or work your whole life or pay taxes your whole life, and then suddenly you don't matter anymore. Welcome to the reservation, people. Russell Means had it right so many years ago, and he was dismissed by so many people. But he told you, he told me, he told all of us, and that is exactly what's going on right now. It's not fake, but it is a head fake. And the minute that you say to yourself and to your family and to your community, uh, no, this is not how it's supposed to be. Uh, no, this is not accept this is not acceptable. And we are exceptional people as a whole. Do not let them tell you different because that's exactly what they're doing. And the next thing that they'll do after that is tell you how your religion doesn't matter. No way. Then they'll tell you that your property ownership doesn't matter. No way. Then they'll tell you that you can't drive a car and you can't own a cow and you can't grow your own food. You can't have the right to defend yourself. It's all happening. It's all already happening. But when you sit back with your cup of coffee today, because it's a, hopefully you're getting some cool weather and a little bit of rain and maybe a little toboggan action going on in your, in your neck of the woods, sit back with that cup of tea or cup of coffee or whatever and think about it. Think about how the setup has actually been going forth for the last 10 to 20 years. And look what it's doing to the young people of this country. They don't even hardly identify with the things that we once knew. They're being programmed. Oh, wait a minute. Let me put this in there. Programmed. Here's another thing. See, when you realize what's going on and you speak against it and you stand up against it and you start looking around going, hey, that's not right. Hey, that's our tax dollars. Hey, who are you? Hey, why do I have to give up filet 
when you're still right, flying around in zippy, zippity doo dah on, on airplanes and eating your filet, but you're telling me I gotta eat a bug? Huh, okay. See, when you start doing these things, then they have to tell you that you need to be deprogrammed or reprogrammed. See how it's all falling into place? Are you awake yet? Because they don't care what color you are, sweetie. They don't care how you think you voted. They don't care who you lay down with at night. Why, you're just a mere peasant. Kill the Indian, save the man. Welcome to the reservation. Like, subscribe, and share. I hope this uh, made you think a little bit. <clears throat> hope you see what's going on. Be peaceful. Pray hard. Pardon me, but prep like hell and stay the course. You're the only one that's gonna save your children at this point. Like, subscribe, and share, guys. Love you so much. Thanks for being here. Gotta get back to work. Lots to do. See you on the next video.